Okay, so the first thing that we want to do when we're checking out any new game um, is the different features that they have available. So I am guessing, okay, so Friendly Neighborhood, Minimal Combat Challenge, you cannot be knocked out in combat. Okay, Friendly, want to enjoy the story, amazing for uh, Balanced. Spectacular, so more difficult combat. Okay, so Spectacular seems to be the hardest. Amazing. What we might do is we might start off at Friendly because I definitely, hey, definitely here for the um, the story, but we don't need it to have minimal combat. Um, popular settings. Include some of the most frequently adjusted settings. Okay. Subtitles on. Fabulous. This, a having different subtitle sizes is great. My one criticism is show us. So like just down the bottom of the screen, popping up what the difference between standard, large, and largest are. We'll go with standard. Narrated ASL. Enable narration of subtitled American Sign Language lines. So as if there was a translator, I'm going to put that on. I would be happy to read it, but I'm also, it's, it's also one of those things that I'm like, they've had someone who's also narrated those lines as well as clearly they've had consultation, which I'm very happy that Miles and played it recently, I would remember her name, but they're gonna, they're clearly gonna have interactions, um, because he knows ASL as well. Vibration setting. All vibrations are enabled, feel the thunderous impacts of villain attacks. None. Functional. Useful cues for gameplay and accessibility. The settings focuses only on crucial gameplay elements, such as objectives, abilities, wayfinding, critical health, Interactive clues such as detecting hidden objects or navigating the environment. That's very useful from an accessibility standpoint because it means that you as the player, this quite possibly could be useful uh, for someone who's either vision impaired or hearing impaired because it gives you some additional feedback to let you know something is happening that you need to need to find or need to be aware of. Um... I think I think that's really good. We'll go with the the full experience because we don't need to utilize that, but I like that that's an option. Choose to invert controls while using the camera to look up, down, left, right. I think we'll leave that off. Uh, music volume. We'll pop that down to like a uh, seven. Um, enhanced auto aim. Makes it easier to snap onto targets when activating aim mode. I'm going to put that on mainly because usually targeting can be very, um, especially if it's using like the triggers and the bumpers, it can be very hit and miss. Um, so I like a bit of auto aim. Motion blur, adjust the blurring effect created by camera motion. Uh, turning the setting on and off will enable or disable motion. Let's have it enabled. Um, adjust the intensity of the film grain visual effect. Again, when having settings like this, what do you mean? Like, is there going to be like grainy film, sort of like olden style film to, to show that you are, uh, we as the audience are watching something that's in the past? Um, we'll leave that at 10 just because that's what it was at. Okay, I think. Reset to default, reset to default. Okay, I think if we just go back. Image calibration. Brightness. The 5 setting is the darkest and 100 is the brightest. Interesting that this doesn't give the... Me. Excuse me. Whew. Um, 
Hey, fairy, welcome on in. Where's the mini skirt made of snake skin? Oh, and who's the? Oh, um, oh, that's gonna that's gonna come to me. Well, <laughs> welcome on in though. We're just going through. Um, we're just going through all the different accessibility options before we get started into the Spider-Man game. Um, da -da 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 Nineteen eighty five? Is that the name of the song? <laughs> I'm so sorry that I have to go through the entire chorus. <laughs> but amazing. Welcome on in. Um, you know what? Let's 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 go a bit of brightness. Contrast. Okay, let's leave that on to fifty. Uh, full screen effects, when turned off, damage vignettes, intense flashing effects, and effects that impact on the entire screen will be removed. We'll leave that on, but I like that that's an option there as well, because it means potentially, um, if you are someone who is affected by strobing lights and all that sort of stuff, um, it means that you can lessen that impact or remove it altogether by the looks of it. Uh, graphics mode, 30 frames per second. We'll go with uh, Fidelity, just because that's usually better when it comes to streaming. VRR, when set appropriately on the console settings, variable refresh rate of compatible display to improve res We're just gonna leave that at auto. <laughs> uh, we'll leave that off, we'll leave that as on. I feel like that is like real specific stuff around um, video collaboration. Audio collaboration, global volume, we'll put it at 100. We've already moved the music volume down a little bit from that other setting, but interesting to see that it isn't replicated here. Um, okay, it's clearly just registering sort of like the computer and the headphones as TV speakers, which is fine. 3D audio, I imagine we have some, um, we have some PlayStation headphones. Um, so I imagine that's where we could change them. Midnight mode, reduce the range between quietest and loudest sounds. Oh, okay. So that's if you are playing late at night, early in the morning, there's other people in the house that might get disturbed. So it means that it's not sort of, you know, crickets and then explosions. Um, so I like those all settings. Okay. We probably could have just gone into here. Now, here we go. I love that song, Star. Welcome on in. Love to have you here. We are just going through the settings before we really get kicking in. Uh, so far, so far seeing... Who's that Pokemon? <laughs> so far seeing um, similar options to what they had in the first two games. Um, so that is really good to see. So we have um, challenge level. Challenge level modifiers. Okay, this... This opens up a lot. Lurking Forever Buffer Land, no problem at all, Star. This opens up a lot of different stuff in that if you want, if you want the puzzles to be easier, but the enemies to be harder, dodge parry timing. I'm, I'm gonna go increase because depending on what the buttons are required, we might need a bit of an increase. Chase assist. Chase targets have a lowered top movement speed, allowing for longer windows of time before target escapes. Uh, automatically attached to the chase target's vehicle when in range. Yes. We're going to turn that on. This is brilliant. Adjust the game speed. Okay, so this is... This is... Um, <laughs> my battery charger port in my phone sucks there. This is really interesting because this means that if you are, like if you're someone who has less fingers than I do, if you are someone who potentially is playing this game with a single hand, or potentially, this also opens up for something like people who play um, video games using their feet because they, they cannot use their arms or hands. Being able to reduce the speed at which stuff is happening to allow you 
to do what you need to do to do the game. That's, this is, this is impressive. I, yeah, love it. Um, we've put enhanced auto aim on. Uh, quick time events, carnival game sequences will automatically. Now, last time, last time they had like a single press or, or like a press and hold which I really like because I'm using sort of like the side of my um, pinky finger for the buttons. And if you have something that has too much matching, literally like you can end up with blisters, like it's not good. Um, and so this only has on and off. So we're going to turn that on because that's, that's fine. I don't feel like it lessens the game for myself. Swing assists. Slow corner time scale. Okay, so it like slows down. Web line bending. Bend while walking on them. Oh, that's cool. And fall damage. When enabled. Take damage when falling from great heights. We're Spider-Man. <laughs> we don't fall from great heights. Controls. Invert controls. Oh, here we go. Repeated button presses. A hold. Hold and taps. There we go. So that's what we were talking about earlier. So that's good to see. Um, continuous dodge. When enabled, hold circle to continuously dodge. We shouldn't need that, but I like that that's a possibility, especially if you um, are someone who potentially feels very overwhelmed when you're playing a game like this and you've got a few enemies that are ganging up on you and you just need a bit of space. It means that you can just hold that circle button and just continuously dodge away, sort of figure out what your next move is. Um, web shooter burst upon firing up to three webs at once or enable firing up to three webs at once, allowing regular enemies and gear puzzles to be worked up in a single button press. I'm going to leave that off for now. Toggles, um, aim mode. We'll leave that there at the moment. Swing parkour mode. It's going to be interesting. I'm getting the feeling that they've potentially changed the way some of the... That should definitely be a toggle, because then we can just press it. Uh, melee mode. When the melee action is either a single strike, a four hit combo, per button tap, or a continuous action. Okay, so like you could potentially hold the melee attack button and just... The Spider-Man will do all the... Uh swinging for you um camera audio subtitles visual ui we'll leave all those as they are accessibility it's always i always find this part interesting because i think we're still in that um still in that phase where companies i was gonna say video game developers but like companies in general have a very still a, quite a narrow idea of what an accessibility feature is. Okay, so game speed, we talked about that, fantastic. Chase assist, we've turned that on because that'd be really good. We'll leave simplify puzzles off, but I like that that can be toggled on and off. Um, dodge parrying time, we have increased that because depending on the button press, we will definitely benefit and have a better experience using that. Um, enhanced auto aim on, yes. Uh, quick time autocomplete. I'm just going to put that on there because the, usually I find it very detaching. And then we sort of talked about that sort of um, button taps versus button hold. Um, slow corner time scale. So it slows down when we are whipping around a corner. I should be okay. Um, I will leave swing steering assist as to what it was already on. Now these are the controls. Repeated button presses and sort of hold. Continuous dodge, we have that off. Um, that's a hold. That's going to be interesting. That might become a toggle, but we'll see. Um, aim mode, hold, melee mode. The melee mode is really interesting. Having a single strike, four hit combo per button tap or just a continuous action. That's really, that is really quite interesting. Um, we will leave air trick mode air trick input must be held in order to continue performing air tricks while swinging 
for maintain to automatically hold. Okay, we'll leave that on hold. Uh, look at waypoint functionality. Automatically turn the camera towards the objective. Scan. We'll leave that off for now. Uh, camera follow. Yep, so that means that if we're swinging or we're running, the camera is behind us. Camera, combat camera, automatically rotates the camera to assist with keeping enemies in view. Yes. Motion sensitivity, I don't get. I'm not sensitive to sort of some of these. Um, so the full screen effects, I like that you can turn that off and on. It means that if you're going to be having like strobing effects, you can, you can make sure that those aren't going to happen. Camera shake, if anything, I just find that disruptive. Um, I was going to say annoying. I'm like, no, I actually find it really like, stop it. Um, motion blur, adjust the blurring effect to the camera, I'll leave that on. Center dot is off, but that can be, that can be really helpful. Like having a center dot, which means that there's always a dot at the center of the screen. People who do feel, um, sort of the effects of like motion sickness, having that center dot is very helpful. And I like that it calls out that it is hidden during the cinematics because people might go, well, I don't want this dot in the middle of my screen while, you know, the story's playing out. Um, depth of field provides a blurring effect for objects that are out of focus with the camera. When enabled, the farther away an object is from the camera's focus, the less sharpness. Okay, we'll leave that on. Chromatic aberration uh, provides a filmic effect where colors appear slightly shifted and out of focus at the image's corners. Okay, we'll leave that on. Um, look sensitivity, these should, be okay. Audio assist, so we've turned on the narrated ASL. Voice boost. When enabled, dialogue in the game is turned up to be more audible. While characters are speaking, it adjusts other sounds. So the dialogue is clearer. So that, that could essentially be um, really handy if you were just wanting to go in and do that. I know we played around with some of the audio earlier. High frequency cutoff filters out all frequencies above 6,000 hertz, such as high pitch ringing after explosions. We'll leave that off because I think that's a good cinematic effect. But again, I like that this is in here. Like the, f as an accessibility character category, the fact that we are just over halfway scrolling down, a lot of options. I deeply appreciate it. Uh, enables the notch frequency filter slider to remove a specific frequency range. Interesting. So if you know if you are affected by a specific frequency range, you can do that. Low frequency cutoff filters out everything. So like the base of an explosion filters out that lower end. Subtitles. I do. Hello. Hello. Okay. This, this is good. I was talking about the, like, I great, fantastic that there's three different subtitle sizes. The fact that you can adjust the color of the subtitles and also like the name, like the color of who's speaking. So it makes it very apparent to you. Subtitle background color should be black. Um, that's amazing. Emphasis text color, set the color of emphasized text. Attacking enemies and dodging their attacks generates focus. Cool. We'll leave that at standard. Um, High contrast options. Okay, so this is where, this is where in order to improve visibility for yourself as a player, you can give like a color shade to heroes, allies, NPCs, basic enemies, ranged enemies, advanced enemies, menace enemies, a boss shader, story critical, distraction, collectible. This is fantastic. This is amazing. Like the, to have a whole bunch of sort of um, like shade options. So then that way you as the player know, okay, I've set advanced menace and bosses to red. So I know they're going to be harder or I need to need to look out for them more. That's, that's brilliant. Overall, thoroughly impressed. Most accessibility sort of areas, it might have 
but it's not that long ago that the options would have been subtitles on and off. And and maybe maybe one or two other things. Like maybe uh taps versus hold for quick time events. The fact that there is so many here, I shouldn't it shouldn't be a big deal, but it, it is a big deal because a game like this, which will be popular, and a lot of people will play it, the fact that there is this many accessibility options, thoroughly encouraging for what can happen in other games going forward. Brilliant. Brilliant. 